Oh hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster and today we have a very special episode. We'll be exploring Balenciaga Spring Summer 2020. Those of you who follow me on Instagram already know about this project, but I'll go ahead and explain the premise of what we were doing. Normally in these episodes, I will take a single runway show and spend about 20 minutes picking apart all of the references and all of the details and all of the story that they are telling through that show. But I kind of pride myself on having the smartest and most plugged in audience in all of YouTube, so I wanted to try a little experiment. Throughout most of the month of December in 2019, I posted four looks from this runway show per day and said, if anybody recognizes anything about these looks or has any ideas to what they might be referencing or what they mean or what they're trying to do or just an interesting detail, please DM it to me. I got over a thousand responses and I kind of culled through them and organized them into uh, these, these notes here. And I will now be sharing with you the insight that you provided to me. For this project, I've been very purposefully trying to avoid any information about the show myself. I've been engaging with people when they send me their thoughts and stuff and obviously copying and pasting them down and printing them out and organizing them. But for the most part, as far as like research and stuff, I, I really have been trying to back off of that because I don't want to over narrativize this one. The whole point of this experiment for me is that I'm just kind of going to present what was given to me. If you're not already familiar with this show, it is a beast. 91 looks to be exact. There is an awful lot to go through here, but that made it where we could take it at a very slow pace during the actual analysis period, that, that whole month of December, and it made it where I was able to uh, pull out some pretty interesting details from you all. So we'll just take a moment here to actually review all of these clothes, oh, and it's definitely worth looking at all of those details if you happen to miss out on the Instagram story. And if you did miss out on the Instagram story project, why, why do you not follow me on Instagram? That feels kind of weird. Okay, let's get started. I'm so excited. Let's do this. Hey, real quick, um, so I have a Patreon and you should definitely support it. There's really not anybody else in the uh, entire world who makes content like this, a really in-depth analysis of runway shows, kind of treating this stuff like the art that it is. And uh, I really want to make more of it, but I can't do that unless I have more time on my hands. And the only way I can have more time, unfortunately, is if I have money, a source of income from this channel. And uh, we don't run any ads, as I'm sure you've noticed. It would mean a ton to me if you would support on Patreon. If you do that, you get to join the Discord server. There's a, a lot of incredible people in there. A lot of people who know a lot more about fashion than I do, and it's, uh, it's always a very enlightening experience just in the huge Fashion Friends group chat. So sign up for the Patreon. Please and thank you. Like I said, I'm going to resist the urge to narrativize what we're talking about here. I might slip up at some point, but we're mostly just going to be sticking directly to the notes. So the, the first big thing that we got to cover is the setting. Uh, this place that they did this show in is, uh, it's, it's intimidating. The really bright blue, if we look at it from a bird's eye perspective, it kind of looks like a fingerprint. Especially this very like royal blue that's being so dominant in a space. This, this color is not ever used like this in interior design. And also being mixed with the music that was put together by Demna's boyfriend, which is mostly uh, clips of different horror movie soundtracks, very uh, creepy, foreboding, impending doom kind of stuff. All said, we probably had the most comments about these weird, ill-fitting suits that appear at the beginning of the show. I mean, just people giving all different kinds of theories as to what these weird, frumpy, purposeless looking suits could possibly mean. And extremely specific too. I mean, like one guy, to, to quote him, he said, security guards, I grew up in Dusseldorf, the city where Demna grew up as well, and I feel like a lot of the norm core Demna is known for is inspired by German fashion. And I say fashion in quotation marks because you can't really call it that, as the German people care very little about fashion and mostly wear clothes for the sole purpose of not being naked. I know a lot of very stylish German people, thank you. The wide ass pants with the slim belt, that makes them look even larger with the seemingly poor fitting suit jacket remind me a lot of what every security guard at a bank or a big corporation looks like. Nothing seems to really fit. It just looks like some work clothing that they just had hanging in a storage closet that they gave to them on their first day. We also had people guessing that this is uh, people who are at a uh, huge tech or business conference, like the kinds that cost like 
12 grand to attend. And so it's like exclusively for massive corporations. But I think the most consistent guess about this that uh, is confirmed through a lot of the like Vogue review and kind of stuff is that this is uh, some kind of image of the UN or the EU, uh, something that is a bunch of nations getting together to do politics together. And so these looks are kind of based off of people who, because of their job, they have to just sort of live their lives in extremely formal clothing, but they themselves just don't, a lot of them, don't care at all about what they look like. And so they end up just going for uh, whatever is remotely comfortable and will take the least amount of time. So they're not getting stuff tailored, they're just getting whatever they feel like they can be on an airplane in and sit at a meeting at for eight hours and et cetera, et cetera. The most consistent idea that I was hearing Hearing from all of you was that the topic of this show is the super powerful people in the world, a group of maybe a thousand or two thousand individuals in the world who hold the most power. On that same note, we had another really good quote that I liked a lot. It was, I don't know if it's been mentioned already, but the looks are very 90s inspired and looking at other pieces, it's obviously so. That's a good reason why he used older models to possibly pay homage to their time and where they were when these cuts and fits were used unironically. Which obviously, I mean, that's Demna's whole thing, right? Is ironic dressing. One thing that a lot of people push me towards is this Diet Prada post where they uh, were asserting that these shoes are a ripoff of a young designer, Paula Canovas Del Vos, which yeah, I can see that. To further back up the theory uh, that this show is about the super powerful, we have the Balenciaga logo here that is a play on the Maestro logo, which is a, uh, a debit card that's owned by MasterCard. We also had the comment that there's probably a reference to the fact that Balenciaga designed the SNCF uniforms, which is the French National Railway Company. Those uniforms were designed by the House of Balenciaga back in the 90s and 2000s. So there is this element of them participating in this culture where people have to wear these clothes, but they're not really looking necessarily to look very sharp in them. They just need to wear them because they're at work. One comment kept it really simple and pointed out that this woman looks a lot like Ellen DeGeneres. The sunglasses here remind us of the sunglasses that your grandma got from her eye doctor and just continued to wear. We had a really, really good catch for look seven where someone pointed out that this show is a 2020 show, which is an election year in the United States, and that uh, this is probably a reference to Hillary Clinton's pantsuits. The one thing that was probably the most pushed about this runway show publicly were these weird ass prosthetics that were put on many of the models' faces. There were some that were a little more normal where like this model is a, uh, he's a young man, but he is meant to look very old in this show. And then others are kind of a play on this weird sort of LA hot girl movement where everyone is sort of trying to become the same person and that same person is like a Snapchat filter of very like extremely prominent cheekbones and stuff and so we get terrifying things like this. One viewer that was reminded of the plastic surgery artist Orlan. And yes, that is a plastic surgery artist, someone who was having plastic surgery done on their own body as performative art. Kind of makes painters look like cowards, doesn't it? Another really interesting thought was that many of these uh, prosthetic faces are meant to be like political caricature cartoons. We had one really interesting comment about the suits that I liked a lot. Quote, the last line about subtly terrifying body augmentation connects, I think, in an interesting way to the idea of suits as uniforms. A suit is something associated with style and beauty, but also something you are expected to wear. Much like the ideas about physical beauty. It is unclear where this idea of it being stylish comes from. Is it something that I genuinely like or is it something that I'm taught to like? Am I expressing individuality or following what my peers are doing? Chances are you're doing both things simultaneously and I really like how this show reflects that by presenting suits which seem simultaneously oversized and purposefully tailored. That is an awesome thought. In look nine, we see 80s power dressing meeting clerical gown coats along with possibly a Bitcoin reference and uh, also possibly Russian cadet uniforms, oddly enough. So yeah, again, just, I mean, uniforms. We also possibly see a variation on a classic Balenciaga sack dress. Another very good catch. Look 10 seems to pretty clearly be referencing a police uniform. In look 12, we see a guy who looks like Jeff Bezos. I really liked this one. In, in look 15, we see this watch. 
And typically we see watches as a means of showing that you are wealthy. Like they're really, I mean, they're not really time pieces. They are demonstrators that you can afford them. So the Balenciaga watch goes all the way down that path and is literally useless. And also the, the gaudy solid gold sport watch worn loosely on the wrist is kind of a classic Wall Street scumbag move. This person also pointed out that it's kind of interesting in that case that it's being worn by a woman. And the bag, the handle specifically reminds one viewer of those uh, roller bags that were new and hot back in the 90s and of course now they're absolutely everywhere and you can't find a suitcase without them. This uh, one comment was pretty funny. Amazing! This high school senior created a DIY prom dress from recycled magazines. Look 19 will leave you speechless. So we have like travel poster collage vibes mixed with the logos of local news stations. A lot of French TV stations in there specifically. And boy is there some atrocious graphic design there. Just wow. So that's on TV every day. Bold. Bold stuff. Here someone pointed out a really interesting detail that the denim is blind stitched, which is very uncommon for denim. Usually, obviously, it looks like this, and then compared to this, this is almost like uncanny valley kind of weird to look at. Here it was pointed out to me that the model is uh, Nora Tirato. She's a performance artist, and uh, she loves wearing Balenciaga while doing performance art and in her normal life, usually like the power suits or the really loud dresses. Also, that looks a lot like Darth Vader. This definitely looks a lot like the clothes at Icy Miyake. Here we can see a reference to a Balenciaga perfume that was huge in the 40s and 50s, and you all know that my French pronunciation is absolutely awful, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. And if you have a problem with that, you can suck my Ladex. The white coat here has very straight jacket kind of vibes. We also have some very strong hunchback vibes in this look. And uh, what's really interesting is pointed out that they're wearing very similar shoes to airplane slippers that are given to you for you know, flights that are 10 or more hours. Okay, so this is the last thing that we're gonna cover here. We had, we had a lot of different guesses about these razor blade earrings. Obviously, there's a lot of punk movement things that could be referenced here, but my, my favorite comment about this is that the razor blade earring is meant to be kind of a symbol of the Sword of Damocles, which is, of course, a tale as old as time meant to demonstrate that the Sword of Power is always closest to the bearer's neck. All right, cool. Thank you so much for joining me. This was super fun. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. We do stuff like this all the time. For the most part, I use Instagram to post inspiration pics to my story and to post fit pics to my feed. But I love doing projects like this. We have a, a weekly series called What Did You Learn About Fashion This Week where people send me responses and I repost them. We, we have a lot of fun on Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram. And thank you so much to everyone who participated in this. I mean, I'm not joking when I say we had over a thousand responses. A lot of them were in reference to a similar idea idea or the same thing or whatever, but I mean, I think we just about covered most of the ideas that I thought were truly like relevant and like good for the show. I'm, I'm sorry if we passed over one of, one of your comments. I obviously couldn't include everything, but I absolutely loved doing this project and I'm really thankful that everyone was so willing to participate and be so open about their guesses. Because to be honest, like the way that you guys were going about doing this project with me is often the way that I'm going about researching these shows in the first place. Like, I mean, so much of this stuff is me just very slowly looking through runway looks, very slowly watching a video, rewatching a video, rewatching a video, and then just sort of at one point going, you know what? That kind of reminds me of this other thing. Uh, and then maybe I find something and then maybe it doesn't feel as relevant when I'm actually looking at the two things side by side. But I mean, that is the kind of stuff that's going to enrich your fashion experience. If you really love a certain designer, if you really liked a certain show, go and see if you can figure out what's going on in that show. Like obviously the Vogue.com review and the Women's Wear Daily review will kind of enlighten you in certain ways, but there's all kinds of references, scores of references and scores of symbolism elements and stuff that they're not gonna talk about in those reviews. And those things are just sitting there waiting for you to find them. The exercise that we did in this video and over the course of December in 2019 
that's what's going to make fashion a better place for everybody. Because if more people are looking into this stuff and are making Instagram posts about it and posting about it in YouTube comments and talking about all the cool things they found out, that's going to encourage houses to be more open about the references that they're using and kind of help us to make fashion a little, little less vapid. Please follow on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, and please support me on Patreon. I love you all, gosh, so much. Bye.